Playing hands out of the blinds can be tricky. On one hand, you're in bad position, but on the other hand, you've already got money invested in the pot. Let's say you're playing in a $10, $20 limit hold'em game and are in the big blind with 7-8 offsuit. Now a player in middle position raises the pot and you're the only one left in the hand. Sure, 7-8 isn't exactly a strong hand. You wouldn't play it from an earlier position outside the blinds, but should you call with this hand if you've already invested a bet? Well, let's take a look at the math. Your opponent has thrown in $20 already. There's $5 in there from the small blind, and you should also count the 10 you've already put in. That adds up to $35. Now, it's only costing you $10 to call, so you're getting odds of 3.5 to 1, and all you have to do is beat one player. 7-8 offsuit isn't going to be a favorite over most of the hands your opponent is raising with, but since you're getting 3.5 to 1 odds, it doesn't have to be. If your opponent raised with ace-king, for example, then your 7-8 is less than a 2 to 1 underdog. Things change even more drastically, though, if you're playing No Limit Hold'em when annies are added into the pot. Let's say you're in a Hold'em tournament and are once again in the big blind. This time, your hand is 6-4 offsuit. There are nine players at your table, and each who've annied 100 with blinds of 4 and 8. Right off the bat, there's 2,100 in the pot. Now, let's say a tight player raises the minimum from under the gun, which should signify a very strong hand. Everyone folds back to you, and you're faced with a raise of 800 more. Once again, let's look at the math. We already know that there's 2,100 in there, plus we now have an additional 1,600 in the pot after the preflop raise for a total of 3,700. You only have to call 800 more to win 3,700. That gives you close to 5 to 1 odds. Even if your opponent showed you that he had pocket aces, you'd still want to call this pet. Even pocket rockets are only a little better than a 4 to 1 favorite against 6-4 offsuit. There are some drawbacks, however, to defending your blinds with trashy hands. When you start with trashy hands out of position, you might find yourself being forced to make very difficult decisions. For example, if the flop comes 9-6 deuce and you have that 6-4, I mean, should you bet, should you check, and then fold to a bet? How about a check raise? I mean, there's a lot of things to think about here. Playing optimal poker is just not easy. The very best poker players in the world, those that are adept at making tough decisions in sticky situations, are generally known as very liberal blind defenders. They're playing the math, but they're also very confident in their ability to read their opponents and possibly bluff them out as well. Ideally, that should be you as well. You want to strive to be a blind defender, but it's not a route I would choose to teach beginning players. As a beginning player, you'd probably be better off folding some of the garbage hands in the big blind so you don't make big mistakes later in the hand. Even the best pros, they won't defend their big blind with seven deuce offsuit. Well, with the exception of Gus Hansen, who's known to be extremely loose, okay? By defending your blinds more often and contesting more pots from the big blind, you'll also be sending a message to the rest of the table that your big blind is not for sale, and they shouldn't bother trying to steal it since you're coming. Now, that's a table presence that really works. If I know that a player in the big blind will only call a raise with a very strong hand, I would never give him a break and apply maximum pressure on him. However, if the player in the big blind has re-raised me a few times and is calling most of the time from the big blind, it would force me to give him a little respect. Instead of raising his blind at will, I'd be a lot more selective against him.